Hello, I'm Althea, and I'm a learning fellow at the Church of the Larger Fellowship, and I wa work with congregational life in prison ministry. I come to you tonight from the unceded land of the Pawtucket, Wampanoag, and Massachusetts people. Tonight I'm joined by Aisha Hauser, Lucretia Williams, Aaron Babcock, and Laurie Stone. Quoting from the Unitarian Universalist Pocket Guide, we won't ask Unitarian Universalists to believe what you find unbelievable. We do challenge ourselves to be faithful to our highest aspirations and to our, our most deeply held convictions. We do affirm fundamental values like those articulated in the principles the inherent worth and dignity of every person and compassion for one another, which calls us to act to allay suffering and work for justice. We affirm our interconnectedness. We become fully human as part of a community. Tonight, we start the celebration of Kwanzaa, Habaragani. It is a week of celebration created for Black folks, by Black folks, sustained by Black folks. This is a celebration which was framed in the mid-1960s during a time of great despair in my community. The driving idea of this holiday was to help African-American families reconstitute, to heal our communities, and to hold on to who we were and are as a people. This too has been a very difficult year for all people. COVID, COVID Delta, COVID Omicron, and more COVID anticipated. Vaccinated, don't vaccinated, boost, when to boost, which one to boost, all kinds of reasons. There was a systematic assault on black and brown people, forced separation of families, and caging of children. Black and brown trans persons, predominantly women, being murdered at an increasingly alarming rate. Young black and brown men being killed by police for reasons like they thought they grabbed their, their that they thought their gun was a taser and not a gun. A black man was hunted by white men in a truck for no other reason than he was black, male, and out jogging. Gun violence is escalating at an alarming rate, and no one seems to have the energy or the desire to fix the problem. This has been a year characterized by demands designed to divide and separate us, designed to seduce you into being afraid of the other and not embracing our differences enticing you into a camp of good people on both sides and not naming wrong as wrong. And please, please forgive this digression, but please tell me why it is 71 degrees in Iowa and 80 degrees in Colorado in December. This has been a year and I for one can't wait for it to be over. As Unitarian Universalists, we are called on to be in right relationship with each other, to live our principles, to work towards a beloved com community. The Church of the Larger Fellow Fellowship will be celebrating Kwanzaa this week. We invited Black pastors to reflect on each one of the principles. The essence of Kwanzaa is held in rituals, in words, and the grounding of gifts given to us by our ancestors and our collective heritage. Today is the first day, and the principle is umoja, unity, to strive for and maintain unity in family, community, nation, and race. And Lucretia Williams will be lifting that up tonight. The other principles, Kuja Chagalia, Ujima, Ujama, Nia, Kaumba, Imani will all be explored and reflected on during the, this coming week on the CLF Facebook page. I hope you will join.
Tonight, I like the chalice in honor of Bell Hooks. She wrote, the light of love is always in us. No matter how cold the flame it is always present, waiting for the spark to ignite, waiting for the heart to awaken. Tonight on this first day of Kwanzaa, I light my chalice, hoping that this celebration will ignite in your heart for yourself, for others, and for community of love. My chalice is lit. Please light your chalice. The first symbol of Kwanzaa is unity, or emoja. Prior to 2020, I would say that my life before then was mostly disunity. What type of unity do we want when we all get together? Like, when we actually get together? Do we even know what goals we want for ourselves? I'm going to give you some trigger warnings. I will be making a lot of media references because I'm a nerd and I primarily use art to see the world. I hope I'll be able to convincingly explain the references in ways that work intergenerationally, which in theory should be possible because I believe we are all telling the same stories throughout time. What are your prime identities? The lenses through At a job that did not value me, but valued my emotional labor, I led this activity for my colleagues after doing it myself in a restorative justice training. For a quick summary, my responses were roughly blackness, queerness, and creativity, or nerd, loser. Blackness and unity. I did not feel black enough in spaces and thus was excluded or I was bullied and cheated out of my blackness because being gay was nasty or unattractive unless it was under the gaze of men. It was stupid that I enjoyed Shakespeare and drama club and I was affectionately or not called a weeb and a lover of Japanese culture, so much that we can quote lines from our favorite anime series. Have you ever thought if monkeys tell each other stories of their people? Do whales recount their histories to their younglings so that it brings joy and solace when things don't work out? I don't know about dolphins, but I do know about us. Have these stories touched your life in any way? If you will indulge me, I'm going to nerd out for a moment because that's the only way that I can continue this homily. And Frank, Aladdin. Fa Mulan, Le Petit Prince, Anne of Green Gables, Cinderella, Sonny and Cher, Michael Jackson, All in the Family, Beyonce, I Love Lucy, Star Wars, Sailor Moon, Romeo and Juliet, Osiris, Santa Claus, Ancient Egypt, Victorian England, Legos, West Side Story. What do all these places and people and stories hold in common? Whose stories get told and whose stories get left out? Why are these things cultural phenomenon? We hold some place for them in our heart and they get retold again and again. And to me, it was simple. What about these stories brings our spirit alive? Is it when a child perseveres or 
when a story arc takes a character in a satisfying turn and makes us feel complete, the character we are related to shows us a window into choices that we wish we could have made or thought we made. Finally, someone is telling the truth, we think. They see me. I didn't have any good responses when I first thought of what unity means. I'm not sure what I'm even trying to say here, but I'm thinking about what saved my life last year. Community and connection. Leaning into my creativity and letting it burst through. No more hiding my faith. No more compromising during the holidays and <laughs> and not your friend. No more taking that racist joke at the dinner table by your aunt or uncle. Saying, yes, I don't love my thighs, but I have also not been told to love myself. This skin that I'm in is not my fault. That I am a little person, but I'm still a person. That I am adopted, but no less my family. Saving me this year meant rethinking what I had been told. No more cutting myself into tiny pieces and taking that internalized racism and saying no more. I didn't mean this to be a testimony. You can forgive my Pentecostal roots, but I can only last year and what gives me hope to continue. If you can forgive one more reference, the till emoja in this sermon is based off how long till Black Future Month, a fantasy science fiction collection of short stories by M.K. Jemison, a Black fantasy writer. For me, discovering Afrofuturism, Black power, and Unitarian Universalism felt like truly coming home. It felt like it was possible to imagine a future with Black people doing all the nerdy, scientific, tired, joyful imagining that we do as people, that other people do. That we have a story and we have a right to tell our story, that it's canon, it's not deviant, it is. of unity that I want, the type of unity that I need includes all of me, and it includes all of you. May it be so. Blessed it be, Ashe. Unity, let's hear it for the nerds. Thank you, Lucretia. Over the next week, you will hear a series of Black Pastors' Voices all Unitarian Universalists, reflecting on the six principles of Kwanzaa. It will be viewed on the Church of the Lodges Fellowship Facebook page at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Times. Their messages will be moving, informative, powerful, and I think you will find your place in the need for us to be in community. I hope you can join us. Our closing comes from Jean M. Rowe. We have a calling in this world. We are called to honor diversity, to respect differences with dignity, and to challenge those who would forbid it. We are people of a wide path. Let us be wide in affection and go our way in peace. My chalice is extinguished. I carry the flame in my heart.
may it be so.